This is the SEIU 775 Benefits Group COVID-19 Organizational Update live stream for March 26, 2020. Thank you for joining us to talk about COVID-19 updates. All the information you'll hear today is current as of March 26, 2020. First, a note about accessibility for this event. In addition to having American Sign Language interpretation, we'll also be adding captions after the event is over in English, Spanish, Korean, Vietnamese, Russian, and Chinese. So please check back later for those. One more note about this event. You might have noticed that our events have been following a pattern of social distancing. A few weeks ago, we were seated next to each other. Last week, we were at a six foot distance from each other. This week, we are staying home and staying safe. Each one of us is in a different location. So please bear with us as we adapt to this new social distancing use of technology format. I'm Dr. Leslie Phillips, Senior Director of Research Insights and Innovations at SEIU's 775 Benefits Group and an epidemiologist. I'm so excited to have Abby Solomon, SEIU 775 Benefits Group Executive Director, and Sterling Harders, SEIU 775 Benefits Group Board Trustee and SEIU 775 President with us here today. Thank you both for joining us. Before we begin, can you both give a brief introduction, starting with Abby? Hi, my name is Abby Solomon, and I am Executive Director of SEIU 775 Benefits Group, and it's great to be here with you today. And I'm Sterling Harners. I am President of our Caregivers Union, SEIU 775. Excited to get to talk to folks today. Thanks. As always, we're learning more about COVID-19 every day. For example, just last week, we learned that a number of transmissions in China were from people who didn't show signs or symptoms of seeming ill or sick. And as of earlier this week, we are all in Washington state under a stay-at-home order, though caregivers, of course, fall under the essential services category. By holding these events frequently, we can help ensure that you're up to date. This Facebook Live event will be focused on what is being done currently to best support you, caregivers, during this time. We will be answering the top questions you have been asking. All the information you hear today related to training and health will be available on the SEIU 775 Benefits Group website. And the SEIU 775 webpage has resources for all caregivers. As part of our commitment to you, we will continue updating our website daily with the most up-to-date information. Thank you everyone for joining us live. Sterling, why don't you get us started? You know, I just wanna make really clear that the top priority of our caregivers union during this crisis is to support the caregivers out there doing the critical work to make sure that we are fighting for access to protective equipments and benefits to help limit the amount of pay that caregivers use. Our goal is to be doing everything that we can right now to get caregivers the information and the resources that they need to do their work as safely as possible. And a lot of the work that our caregivers union does is about fighting for respect for caregivers and that's never been more important than it is now. Because what caregivers are doing right now is keeping their clients safe at home and out of hospitals. We hear a lot in the news about how caregivers are the heroes of this moment, and I want to be crystal clear that that includes caregivers too. Thank you, Sterling. Abby? Yeah, uh, you know, I echo uh, Sterling's sentiments and just want to take a moment to acknowledge all of the caregivers out there today watching you are the front line. The work that you're doing is always incredibly important, but especially right now at this moment, you truly are providing an essential service. Here at the Benefits Group, we are working hard to get you the resources, support, and information that you need most, and we want you to know that we are committed to helping you stay safe and healthy. So thank you for providing such amazing care so selflessly to others, and i um, excited to be here with you today. Thanks, Abby and Sterling. Let's get started with Governor Inslee's Stay Safe, Stay Home Executive Order. Sterling, 
What does this order mean for caregivers? Well, Governor Inslee has character has classified caregivers as an essential workforce, which means that we can continue to do the work that we do and care for the folks that we care for. And this is, I, I got to say, important recognition of just how important and critical at this moment in time the work that caregivers do. Because if we can do our job safely during this pandemic, we can help uh, keep our clients safe and at home and out of hospitals, and that is better for all of us. So caregivers have a critical role to play, and we're thrilled that Governor Inslee recognized that. I want to note here that we have heard from some caregivers asking if they need a letter to prove that they are essential workers and we've confirmed with the governor's office that it's not necessary for caregivers to carry a letter saying that they are essential workers. And we've gotten so many questions about this that I actually want to double down on this and make sure that folks um, that fo that that landed. We've been in touch with the governor's office, and what we're hearing from them is that caregivers do not need to carry a letter saying that they are essential workers. But some folks have said, look, I'd just feel more, more comfortable if I had one. And we heard that. And so we have a letter up on our website now that we'll link to in the comments that states that caregivers are essential workers. And if it makes you feel better, you're welcome to print that out and carry it around with you. Thanks, Sterling. Abby, can you tell us what SEIU 775 Benefits Group has done to address in-person learning and what's happening with training deadlines? Yeah, so all in-person classes statewide have been canceled until April 24th. Students will be contacted once more information about rescheduling becomes available. In the meantime, for continuing education, we strongly encourage you to use our online options. There are more than 60 online continuing education courses and webinars available to you right now, and we are adding new content every day. Just last week, we added a one-hour CE webinar titled Infection Control Coronavirus Precautions that gives you more information about COVID-19, its signs and symptoms, and what to do if you're sick. You can enroll by logging into My Benefits. Many of our online CE courses, I just want to note for folks, they are available in Chinese, Korean, Russian, Spanish, and Vietnamese. Um, for all other training, including CE courses in a language that I did not just list, you will be contacted once more information is available about class rescheduling. Can you talk about caregivers who have training deadlines? Absolutely. So much like our classroom closures, ProMetric uh, has te temporarily closed all testing sites statewide. Because of this, DSHS, the Department of Social and Health Services, has temporarily revised provider qualifications for both individual and agency providers. What this means is that caregivers can continue working even if they have not completed basic training or their home care aid certification. Caregivers are still expected to complete the training and certification once they are available again. This temporary policy change also means that caregivers can be hired during this time. The current provider qualifications are, you must be 18 years of age, you need to complete the state name and date of birth background check and be found eligible. And you need to complete the online orientation and safety training. And that's it. So deadlines have also been suspended for CE requirements. If your annual CE deadline was impacted by class closure, you can still work as a caregiver. However, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'd really encourage you to use some of this time to go on online and take some of our CE classes to complete your requirement. And you can enroll uh, by logging in to My Benefits. Thank you, Abby. Something we've heard a lot right now is that caregivers are concerned about their health insurance coverage. What kind of updates do we have for caregivers about health benefits? Great question. The health of caregivers is one of our top priorities, and there are a few things to mention. One is that we recognize some caregivers may experience reduced hours due to COVID-19. Eligibility for SEIU 775 Benefits Group health coverage usually requires that caregivers work at least 80 hours in a month. 
However, if you have coverage through us and expect not to be able to work the required 80 hours for that coverage, you can now apply for continuous health care. We'll share a link in the comments where you can find out more information, and we'll be continuing to post information that you can stay on the lookout for, both on Facebook and through email. I also wanted to note, for those of you who don't have any health insurance at all, the Washington Health Benefits Exchange is offering a special open enrollment period until April 8th, and that information is also available on our website. Thanks. The next question is about self-care. Right now, many people are experiencing stress and anxiety about the current situation, and it's natural to feel overwhelmed. How is SEIU 775 Benefits Group supporting caregivers through this time? Yeah, you know, this situation is, it's really unique and every single one of us is impacted. I know that so many of us are struggling to take it all in and figure out how to move forward with so much uncertainty. Taking care of your emotional health right now is more important than ever. And what is happening right now is adding all kinds of stress to even everyday tasks that people are used to doing. So I'm really happy to share that all SEIU 775 caregivers, even those who are not currently on our health insurance plan, can access our self-care resources. These resources include Ginger, an emotional support app for touchscreen phones, Resource Finder, which features free work, life, or self-care services, and Tools for Calm, our mindfulness course for caregivers that teaches practical tools for stress relief. We will also be posting mindfulness tips and exercises on Facebook, and we do have new Tools for Calm classes that are going to become available in June. I also wanted to let you know that uh, we are going to be hosting another Facebook Live session like this one, but focused completely on mindfulness. So keep on the lookout for that. That's fantastic. Thanks, Abby. For me, a wonderful way to address stress has been streaming my usually in a studio, now on the television set, hip hop dance class. And I wonder if the two of you could share some of your self-care actions at this time, starting with Abby. Yeah. So, you know, for a long time now, I have kept a daily gratitude journal. Every morning, I start the day with a cup of coffee and I just take a few minutes to write down a few things that I'm grateful for. And I find that it's a way to center myself each day and remind myself that there are, are, are many good things in my life. And I have found this practice to be especially reassuring during this time when it's so easy to, to, to really drown in the fear of what is happening all around us. Um, and right now, one of the things that I am really grateful for is my SEIU 775 Benefits Group community. It is really comforting to know that we are all in this together. Thanks, Abby. What about you, Sterling? We are grateful for you too, Abby. Um, what I am doing is, you know, the dog is getting much more uh, frequent walks than she normally does. I can do that while I'm social distancing. It gets me out of the house. It gets me a little bit of exercise. Um, I'm doing lots of YouTube workout videos in the basement because I can't go to the gym. Um, and I'm getting lots of calls into friends and family. I'm keeping into um, in, in really good touch with folks that I'm close with um, during these rough times. Thanks, Sterling. Next, we're going to talk about one of the biggest issues that caregivers have right now, which is happening all over the world, a shortage of personal protective equipment, or PPE. Sterling, can you talk about this situation? Yeah, and, you know, I just want to be clear that it is absolutely outrageous that the people on the front lines of this crisis do not have the equipment that they need to do their work safely. We've talked a lot already on this call on how critical the work of caregivers is during this pandemic. And the facts of the matter are that a lot of the work that caregivers do just can't be done while social distancing. If caregivers are helping folks out of bed or helping them get dressed or helping them to the bathroom, you can't do that from six feet away. And so it is outrageous that caregivers don't have the equipment that they need to do their work safely. 
And we know that there is a national shortage of PPE, of personal protective equipment. And we think the federal government has really fallen down on the job here. We are demanding that they release the stock PPE from the stockpile. There's no reason to save it for, for later. We need it now. And to force factories to ramp up production of PPE. There's a national petition demanding PPE that thousands of healthcare workers have already signed on to. If you think caregivers need to have masks to do their work safely, you're welcome to go sign on to that petition. We'll link to it in the chat. And then closer to home, we're working to make sure that as PPE becomes available, as personal protective equipment um, like masks become available, that caregivers are included in the distribution of that equipment. Thanks, Sterling. Abby, can you share your thoughts on this issue as well? Yeah, thank you both for bringing this up. And I really can't echo enough uh, Sterling's sentiments. It's really heartening to see SEIU 775 and SEIU nationally taking the lead on this critical issue. As we know, it has been top of mind for caregivers. Wanted to also let folks know that we are uh, lending our voice to this uh, effort, um, actively working on getting caregivers access to PPE as soon as it becomes available. And we will be issuing some additional guidance guidance on our website for caregivers who can't access that PPE right now. I was really proud to join you, Dr. Phillips and Dr. Jay Fathi, um, in authoring a letter calling on Washington State local health departments to prioritize access to PPE for caregivers and to provide uh, deeper recommendations on alternatives when necessary. You can find that letter on our website and in the co comments, and we will continue to update our website and Facebook page as more information on this critical issue becomes available. Thank you, Sterling and Abby. Because we know how important PPE and staying safe on the job is, in addition to posting this information online, we're going to be hosting a Facebook Live event on April 1st at 10 a.m., to talk more about PPE and how caregivers can stay safe at work. We'll post more details on our webpage soon. I would also like to take a moment to address the new guidelines by DSHS in response to Governor Inslee's proclamation. We'll be reviewing some of the high level points, but please talk with your case manager or employer for more information. Per DSHS, Certain personal care tasks should be done by phone or other technology from a distance, unless they need to be completed in person. If they are required to be in-person tasks, you should always maintain at least six feet of distance whenever possible. Some tasks that could be done remotely include medication, treatment, and appointment reminders, and supervision for things like bathing, personal hygiene, eating, phone, and telephone wellness checks. There are also personal care tasks that may be completed outside the home. For instance, without the client being present, cooking a meal preparation and delivering the food, essential shopping. Please visit the DSHS link posted in the comments to view these detailed guidelines. Like PPE, we've been getting a lot of questions about various issues around lost hours for various COVID-related reasons, as well as what to do if your client is sick. I know we've answered a few of these already, but I'd like to take a moment to directly answer some of them again. So what do you do if you're sick or your client is sick? I can answer this first question. The most important thing is that if you are sick, if you have a cough, a runny nose, fever, muscle aches, even just a sore throat, do not go to work. It is the best way to protect your client and to let yourself stay home and get well. And if they do get sick, Many caregivers are wondering, what does this mean for them? What happens if they lose hours because they're sick? What if they lose hours because they have to self-quarantine due to a known exposure? Or what if the caregivers themselves are high risk? Sterling, can you discuss these issues? Yeah, our union has been doing a lot of work to make sure that caregivers are still able to get paid even if they lose hours. So if you're sick or if your client is sick or if you yourself are part of that vulnerable population or if someone in your household is 
or if your client um, is refusing care at this time, there are resources available. You know, we're lucky that we're in Washington state because the, the government here is trying hard to make sure that caregivers don't lose pay as a result of working hours, of, of lost hours. And so if you've lost hours due to the coronavirus and you're not sure what to do for your particular situation, we've built out a quiz on our website that caregivers can take to help them figure that out because it gets really complex. There's lots of different programs out there, unemployment, workers' comp, l &I, paid family leave, taking PTO is an option. And we want to make sure that caregivers are able to navigate what is like frankly, a pretty complex system. So if you are losing hours, but you're not quite sure which avenue you should take, you can go to our website. We will link um, to the quiz in uh, the comments and you can take our quiz and then that'll help show you which of these resources is right for you. Because one of our top priorities right now is making sure that we're helping caregivers navigate this complicated system. Thank you. Sterling, with the recommendations of social distancing, what should caregivers be doing? Some caregivers are asking, should I be going to work? Yeah, we're getting this question a lot. We're getting this question a lot from caregivers. So, Leslie, you mentioned earlier this week DSHS provided some guidance on certain tasks that caregivers can do remotely, like food preparation or calling your client to remind them to take their medication. And when that's possible, um, we'd really encourage caregivers to do that. And if you are at risk yourself, if you're older than 60 or if you have one of the chronic conditions that we're hearing so much about, and if you feel that it's unsafe for you to go to work, you can call your agency supervisor if you're an agency provider or call your case manager if you are an IEP. And then if you lose hours, go to our website, take the quiz, and then follow the links in that to apply for whatever resource makes most sense, given your situation. And if you have challenges with that, call the Member Resource Center so we can help you navigate through that. Thanks, Sterling. Abby, what about the case of losing hours because a client is turning down the service? Yeah, that's a great question. We know that many healthy IPs are losing work due to COVID-19. If this has happened to you and you want to continue working, please try Karina. If you haven't heard about Karina, it's our job matching platform, a website that easily connects caregivers with clients. And right now there are open jobs to apply to. Karina also just posted a blog on KarinaCare.com that includes uh, COVID-19 questions that a client might ask you and tips for conducting safe interviews with clients. So they're all around a really good resource during this time. Thanks, Abby. Sterling, do you have anything to add? You know, I think that Karina is a great resource if folks are looking for more hours. We do just want to make sure that caregivers are paid for all of the hours that they lost due to the coronavirus. So I'm like a dog on a bone on this. I really want to make sure that folks know that they can go to our website, that they can take the quiz, and that can help folks figure out which resource they should be applying for. We've also got tons of stuff on our website that's helpful for caregivers to sort of figure out how best to keep working safely in this environment. So go check it out if you haven't already. Yeah, speaking of more hours, I have a question for both of you. What if that's not enough? What additional financial resources are there for caregivers? Abby, could you start? Sure. On our COVID-19 resources page, the Washington State Department of Financial Institutions has created a list of financial resources that range from mortgage payment help to utility payment, emergency assistance programs, and, and much more. We'll be posting that link in our comments. And as more resources become available, we will continue updating our COVID-19 resources page and would encourage folks to keep visiting that and see what options they might have. Thanks. Sterling, could you comment as well? 
Yeah, you know, I just want to take this opportunity to reinforce what's always been true about our caregivers union, which is that we are not just about the caregivers we represent. We see it as our role to fight for low wage workers broadly. And we are out on the front lines doing that right now, helping to make sure that folks who are suffering a financial harm as a result of this crisis are made whole. We are really trying to figure out how best we can support people during these difficult times. And I'd really encourage folks, you know, if you hear that we're doing a teletown hall, pick up the phone when we call you for that, jump on. We had nearly 4,000 caregivers on a call earlier this week. We're sending out regular emails to folks. We're updating our website daily. So if you have questions, um, feel free to give us a call at our member resource center or go check out our website. We really want to make sure that caregivers have all of the support they need they need to navigate through this tough time. Thanks. And thanks so much for all the questions that we've received today. We've been actively monitoring the comments and providing answers, but if your question was not answered, we'll follow up with you shortly. Thanks to everyone who joined us to watch live. Also a big thank you to Abby Solomon and Sterling Harders. Thank you for joining us today and providing us with such important information to keep caregivers informed. Abby, do you have anything to add today? Uh, yeah, I mostly I just really want to thank all of the caregivers out there for everything that you're doing to keep uh, our communities safe and the incredible work that you do. We know this has been a, a very difficult time and many within our community have already been personally impacted by COVID-19. We want you to know that we are committed to you, your health and your safety, and the staff here at SEIU 775 Benefits Group will continue working hard to keep you safe and get you the resources that you need during these extraordinary times. Really encourage you to continue visiting our website for updated information. We're posting there daily um, and just really want to thank you for your hard work. And I also want to thank you, Dr. Phillips, and you, President Harders. It's been uh, really fun to be here in my first Facebook Live event. Uh, it's been a real treat. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Abby. Sterling? You know, before we wrap up, I just want to say loud and clear to caregivers that the role you are playing at this moment in time is critical. You are keeping folks safe at home. And if we can keep our clients safe at home, that keeps them out of hospitals and that helps flatten the curve and ultimately helps beat this pandemic. Caregivers are on the front lines of keeping us all safe. So thank you for all that you do. You are truly the heroes of this moment. Thank you. Thanks, Sterling. Just a closing note, as I mentioned earlier, we'll be hosting a Facebook Live event on April 1st at 10 a.m. where we'll be talking about more things you can do to reduce your risk of COVID-19 infection while caregiving. This includes what to do when you cannot find a mask, as well as environmental precautions you can take to reduce your exposure risk. We'll have event details up on Facebook soon. Also, a couple of notes about where to go for information. The Member Resource Center, or the MRC, is available from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Friday. And if you can't get through, you can try emailing mrc at myseiubenefits.org. If you're concerned about classes being rescheduled, remember that you will be contacted directly. You don't need to reach out. Someone will reach out to you. For questions about your health coverage, you can call a health benefits specialist at 1-866-770-1917. You can also find information about health and retirement at www.myplanbg.org. Thanks so much. Thanks to Abby and Sterling, and thanks to all of you who joined us today. Thank you for watching the SEIU 775 Benefits Group COVID-19 Livestream Event.